Hello, Retriever fans, and welcome into the first Ryan, How Ryan Odom UMBC basketball show here. Paul Mittermeier along with UMBC head basketball coach Ryan Odom. And, and Ryan, first of all, welcome in. And I guess, first of all, talk to us about the transition coming in here to UMBC and just what it's been like for you and your staff over the last couple of months getting acclimated to the program. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. Uh, you know, we're very fortunate to be here as a staff. Uh, got hired in April, as you know, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, getting to know uh, the UMBC community, uh, fans, uh, certainly, most importantly, our players, uh, just trying to be around them as much as we can, uh, you know, both on and, and off the court. Uh, the guys have responded great. You know, I couldn't be more pleased, you know, with their attitudes. Mm -hmm. and, and how they're approaching the season. Uh, you know, we've got gr great leadership. Uh, we've got two seniors in, in Will Darley and, and Ben Grace who, you know, have stepped up in that category and, and certainly other guys as well have followed suit. Um, but uh, really excited about, you know, the opportunity to coach these guys. Now, the first event we were all exposed to in the Ryan Odom era was the tip-off dinner on Tuesday night yeah. down, at the, uh, um, uh, down at the wharf down in Fells Point. Talk to us about the, the, uh, the, uh, the brainchild for that and kind of what the thinking was in doing that kind of event leading up to uh, the 2016-17 campaign. Yeah, I, I wanted our, our players to feel that, that something different was happening here, you know, for UMBC basketball. And, uh, you know, part of it was friend raising. Part of it was a little bit mm -hmm. fun raising. More friend than fun, quite honestly. Uh, it was more important for our players to feel like all the hard work that they've been putting in since we arrived in April all right, was being appreciated, not just by the coaching staff or, you know, our UMBC athletics department or even beyond that but in the community as well. And uh, it was a great turnout. It was a great night. And uh, we had a great speaker in John Feinstein. And we appreciate him joining us for that evening. And anytime you hear Dr. Rabowski and, right. uh, speak, I mean, that's a special, special occasion. And I certainly appreciate him you know, giving of his time, you know, to our players and our program. Talk to me about your relationship with John. I know you guys go away. I think John described it as he's known you since you were eight years old. Um, just talk about that and, and kind of what he's meant to you uh, throughout your, uh, you know, growing up and then becoming a head basketball coach. Yeah, I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and tell you that we're the closest of friends or anything like that. But, you know, I did meet him when I was young through my father. Uh, my father was an assistant at the University of Virginia for Terry Holland. Mm -hmm. It was back in the Ralph Sampson days, just past that, you know, when Othell Wilson and Ricky Stokes and a lot of their great players were, mm -hmm. were coming through. And, uh, you know, he was doing TV back then, you know, ACC Network television and uh, came in town and, and uh, actually came over on a Sunday morning. I think we were playing maybe North Carolina and uh, it was an early game, and he came over to the house, and my mom made pancakes, and uh, we had a chance to visit a little bit. I was probably 10 or 11 years sure, old sure. at the time. But we've stayed in touch. You know, I worked at American uh, for Jeff Jones back in 2000 and 2003, and, and uh, that was right around the time where he just finished his Patriot League book, The Last Amateurs, and, and uh, we weren't a part of that at that point. But um, certainly we were heading into the league. So we were very, very uh, aware, you know, of, of the book and, and all it meant to so many folks in the Patriot League. Now, obviously your dad, you talked about this, your dad, Dave Odom. Uh, how much growing up around the game influenced you to what you're doing now and being able to watch your dad coach and kind of be around the game of college basketball? I'd say a ton. You know, uh -huh. uh, you know I didn't know it at the time. You know, when you're, when you're a kid, all you're thinking about is, you know, what's next. You want to play. You know, you want to – going to a friend's house, you know, or you're going over to, to play in a rec center game, whatever it is, you wanted to have fun. And uh, I was always around, you know, I was always around his practices, uh, both as an, when he was an assistant at UVA and then also as a head coach. Uh, so I was learning when I didn't even realize that I was learning, you know, sitting in the locker rooms, being around the players, mm -hmm. seeing how, uh, you know, high level individuals interact with one another, uh, you know, some championship teams along the way, watching how they carried themselves. So it, it was – it was. I, I'm extremely fortunate for that opportunity. And then, you know, I ended up playing in college and, uh, you know, had a great time, made a lot of friends, played for an amazing coach in Tony Shaver, who now is the William & Mary coach. 
and uh, you know learned a, a ton under him and learned a ton from my teammates. Still, still am close with a lot of those guys. And uh, you know, I did an internship between my junior and senior year at Bank of America in Charlotte. And you know, I thought up until that point that that's the route I wanted to take. I wanted mm-hmm. to go in the financial world and, and, and do something of that nature. And, and uh, did the internship, had a nice time, but understood at that point it wasn't for me. And I wasn't ready to give up basketball. And uh, my brother was coaching. He's a little bit older than me, and, and he had already started a career in coaching at that time and was doing really well. And so that kind of nudged me. You know, my father never pushed me to do it, just like he never pushed me to play. Sure. It was all about, you know, chasing your own dream and chasing your own passion. And, uh, you know, it's worked out well. Awesome. Talk to us about uh, your staff. Um, you brought up most of your staff from uh, your previous spot at L- L- Lenore, uh, Lemoyne Ryan. Lenore Ryan, Lenore Ryan right. Um, and – Talk to us about them and kind of putting that together here at UMBC. Yeah, I mean, I'm very fortunate. i got a great staff, uh, veterans, a great mix of veterans and guys that are new to the profession. Uh, you start out with Nate Dixon. I mean, Nate, uh, he and I have been together for the better part of you know five years now. We worked together in Charlotte uh, when I got the Lenore Ryan job. Mm-hmm. It was a no-brainer to bring him with me and just glad that he accepted and, uh, you know, got the UMBC job and, and of course, uh, offered him a spot right away uh, to come, come with. And uh, Nate's great. I mean, Nate is a guy that, you know, loves the game. He loves the interactions with, uh, you know, with the players and with the, 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 his coaching staff, you know, the guys that he works with uh, day to day. Uh, he's a very personable guy. And Nate knows a ton of people. Uh, he's been around the business. He's a veteran coach. And uh, UMBC is fortunate to have him here. Eric Skeeters, Eric's awesome. Eric's a local product sure, out of Kingsville. Sure. Uh, so UMBC and, and myself, extremely lucky to have him here. Mm-hmm. Veteran coach. He and I worked together at Virginia Tech and uh, worked for Seth Greenberg down there. And, and uh, you know, he did a great job for Seth and, and helped us get it going, uh, you know, down there in Blacksburg. And uh, just, you know, right time. You know, just worked right, out right. to where we could get him to come here and, and come home, so to speak, to UMBC. And I know he's going to do great things. He's a great father, great husband, great mentor for our players. Uh, Bryce Crawford is the energy guy on our staff. You know, Bryce is the younger guy. And uh, he's happily married to Hallie and getting ready to have a new, new okay. baby. Uh, Bryce and I met at Charlotte. He was our graduate assistant there. And uh, he had a, did a two-year stint with us at Charlotte and then went on to work for Rick Barnes at University of Texas. Uh, was there for two years as the video coordinator, did a lot for their program and, and learned a ton. Uh, you know, Coach Barnes obviously is great in his own right, but he had great assistance as well that Bryce was able to, you know, learn under and kind of help. Um, and then when I got the Lenore Ryan job, I offered him an assistant job there with me, and he accepted and, and did an amazing job for me last year. It was a big part of our success. And uh, just happy he's here. He and Hallie are here with us uh, at UMBC. And then the final member of my staff I probably know the best, uh, Griff Aldridge. He and I worked – or, excuse me, played together in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a lot of fun, you know, during our college days. We came in together. We graduated together. And, uh, you know, he's been in, in the business world, you know, in law for, you know, the better part of about, you know, 12 to 15 years, somewhere in that. I'm not exactly sure of the number, but uh, he's always, basketball has always been in his heart. And uh, when I got the job here, it was a no-brainer uh, when he expressed interest in, in, in joining me. Two things from the tip-off dinner on Tuesday I want to mention. One, you mentioned Griff. First of all, we have to give credit to his wife, Julie, who did an outstanding job. Yeah. We worked, uh, Gary Stein and I worked close with her to organize everything and make sure everything was set uh, with the program and everything else. What a wonderful job she did on that on Tuesday. Absolutely. And then the other thing, I got a chance to talk to Bryce for a few minutes, and he told me the story. He actually is from Ohio State, went yeah. to Ohio State, had a chance to go back there and yeah. coach this year, but instead – chose to stay with you and come here to UMBC. Yeah. Um, what is that, how, does that, how much does that mean to you know, to know that somebody knows that much and, and wants to be on your staff that much yeah. to turn down an opportunity to go back to his alma mater? Yeah, it, it was an amazing night, actually, because he took a couple of days, and I gave him a couple of days to think about it. We were at Lenore Ryan, and we had – it wasn't a tip-off banquet, but it was, a, it was an event where we had some, 
some boosters together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was introducing the staff, much like, you know, I was just talking to you about. And, you know, I brought that up at the very end because he let me know prior to walking in there that he was going to stay. Okay. And, uh, you know, he had a great opportunity to go back, you know, with Coach Mata, and he'll always have Ohio State. Uh, but Bryce is a coach at heart. And, you know, had he gone back to Ohio State, he wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to get on the floor and be an assistant coach like he was at Lenore Ryan. And he felt like, where am I going to have the greatest impact on, mm -hmm. on the young people that I'm going to coach? And uh, so it wasn't necessarily staying with Ryan or going with Coach Mata. It was about, you know, where can, where can I impact the most and, and, and be a quality assistant and learn and grow? And he's been able to do that. I've watched him over a year and a half, you know, now – you know, he, he's gone from, you know, uh, not knowing exactly what to say to all of a sudden he's aggressive and he's going after it. And, you know, he's doing a phenomenal job. I want to talk to you about changing the culture. Um, and that's going to be a big thing here. It's, it's been a struggle. Retrievers go to the NCAA tournament 08. Um, since then, it's been a little bit, of, it's been a grind. And there hasn't been a lot of success here. What are the keys to changing that? and becoming a winning program again in your eyes. Yeah, sometimes when, when you hear coaches say, you know, changing the culture, I don't really like that as much because it's not that the culture was bad here, right? Coach Thomas and his staff, they recruited some amazing, amazing players, some good guys. And uh, so we don't have bad guys on our team. And sometimes when you hear culture, you think, oh, they're, they're bad guys on the mm -hmm. team. They're not bad guys on the team. But we've just got to teach them how to win. And, and that's what we're trying to do every day. And they, they're listening. Uh, they're very coachable. Uh, you know, they're paying attention to detail. Um, you know, they're playing for one another, you know, which I think is very, very important. Uh, you know, together is what we say every time we put our hands in, you know, at the end of a practice or to start a practice uh, because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take everyone in that locker room uh, to turn this thing in the right direction and to all of a sudden get it back to a point where we have a chance, all right, to be uh, in the same conversation, you know, with the team of 2008 uh, that, that went ahead and, and made that March Madness run. Let's talk about the team for a second. Um, Retriever fans, very familiar. Will Darley had a huge game against Stony Brook in the America East Tournament. He's back. Of course, Rodney Elliott, uh, who's, who's been a, a successful player here, America East Rookie of the Year in 2014. Jarris Lyle scored 22 point, or 23 points a game last yeah. year for uh, the Retrievers. But tell us some, about some of the newcomers. Uh, you know, a guy like Max Curran, who I know you're very excited about as a freshman sure. who's coming in. Yeah, Max has done well. You know, he's been a pleasant surprise for us. You know, Mac, I knew Max could play from the first time I watched him. 6'9", uh, very athletic, and can shoot. So that's a very, very good combination, mm -hmm. you know, for a basketball player. Uh, he, he's, he's certainly got slight build. Uh, he's never going to be, you know, 250 pounds. Uh, it's not in his, his genes, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, he's got amazing ability. Uh, he's a guy that has come in very aggressive, uh, but at the same time he's come in trying to fit in with his teammates, and he's done a great job of that. Uh, I'm proud of him and, and what he's accomplished so far academically. He's working hard in the classroom. He understands the importance of the balance between the two. Uh, he's not just here to play basketball. And, uh, you know, he, he's got a chance to, to really compete for playing time and, and impact this team. Another intri intriguing newcomer, K.J. Mara, who a Retriever fans will see. He's going to be the smallest guy on the floor. But, Coach, when you watch him on tape, some of the things he does are pretty amazing as far as the ability to distribute and just the ability, in my eyes anyway, to see the floor and understand what's going on in games. Yeah, K.J. KJ's a dynamite player. I mean, he really understands how to play the position. Uh, he had no choice, you know, because he's 5'7", <laughs> right? you got to be a point guard or else you're probably not going to play. So he, he understands both sides of the ball. And, you know, on offense, he's always thinking pass. He wants to get his teammates involved. He wants to set the table. Uh, but he understands there's times where, you know, teams are going to take that away. He's going to have to score mm -hmm. all right, and make a play for himself. And he's got a good balance between the two. Defensively, he understands he can't just sit back because right. he's small. Right. He's got to pressure the basketball. And uh, he, he's got to be a gnat, so to speak. And he's doing that for us so far this season. 
been very pleased with his development. Talk to me about your first couple of scrimmages. You guys scrimmaged Delaware. You also took on Loyola. Kind of some of the takeaways that you saw from this team in, in those two matchups. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Delaware, all, all the time, you, anytime you have scrimmages, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to kind of get a feel, you know, for your team. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure everybody's getting an opportunity to play and see what they can do. Uh, you know, in a game type atmosphere, I feel like you learn a ton from scrimmages, and uh, it was no different for us in, in, against Delaware and, and Loyola. All right, what about um, the pace and the tempo? We we were kind of kicking this around too Tuesday night. You know, it's it's been a struggle here at UMBC to score points. Um, I, mean, I can you know harken back to a couple years ago against Loyola, where I think it was a a forty four forty game, and I think you know it was a struggle just for either team to score. Um, I was told on Tuesday night that. Uh, that's just not going to happen here with you. Um, up tempo, I was told 80, 90 points a game is something that should be realistic. I don't want to put any pressure on you like your dad did on Tuesday night. Yeah. Talk, compare your players to uh, you know, professional players at, at one point. But, but where do you see the tempo, and, and what's your ultimate goal when we talk tempo and we talk getting up and down the floor and scoring? Yeah, certainly. We want to play faster. Um, you know, it's never going to be a situation where we're saying we have to score this many points all right, to be a successful basketball team. It's got to be about, you know, what puts us in the best cha best position to be able to win. And I like to play faster. It's no secret. But every team's different. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not the Lenore Ryan team that I coached uh, last year. Their, their way of winning was scoring in the 90s, scoring high 80s. You know, that was their best opportunity to be able to win basketball games. Uh, this team here that I'm coaching right now, they, they've shown the ability to – to defend at a, at a very high level um, so far. And it's early. You know, I don't want to toot their, their horn too much mm -hmm. at this point because, you know, we haven't even played a game yet. Right, and, right. Uh, you know, but they are doing what we asked them to do, and they've showed the potential to, to defend very, very well. And uh, But we do want to score. You know, we do want to push the ball and push the pace of the game. Uh, I, I like to play that way. That's the way I played when I was in college. And I think it's a fun style to recruit to. I think that our fans will enjoy it, uh, but it's got to be right for our team too. Gotcha. So we're we're evaluating all of that right now because we're in the preseason as we're heading heading into real when the real bullets come. It's easy to see when you look at the roster as it's composed. There's a tremendous amount of depth at the guard position. Um, is that a blessing or kind of a challenge as a coach to try to figure out who fits where? Who gets time? Who doesn't get time? And and I guess the, the the blessing is that your guys are always pushing for a job, but the challenge has to be where does everybody fit, right? Yeah, as a coach, you know, you always want to have a versatile team, and you want to have guys that you can plug into different spots because that's that's going to make your team better, and it's going to make your competition better, which is going to improve your basketball team. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that's all we're thinking about. You know, we talk about, you know, competing with one another as opposed to competing against each other. This is not a fight. You know, it's, it's, it's a, we're trying to all get better right now so our team's better. And that's where things are at. Um, you know, certainly we've got some depth there at the guard position. And I've been pleased with all of our guards right now. They're competing at a high level. Uh, they're all in their own way, bringing something different to the table, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is going to bode well for us down the line. All right, coming up this Saturday, talk to the fans about what's going on here at the Rack Open Scrimmage. You guys are going to yeah. split up teams, and uh, everybody's invited to come out and check out the team, right? Yeah, exactly. We're going we're gonna to have a black and gold scrimmage. It's going to be open to the public. Hopefully parents, families, kids will come out and, and check us out. Uh, you know, we're excited about, you know, being able to do that and open it up. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a black and gold team. It'll be black and white, really, because I'm actually going to let them wear the uniform okay. Okay. for this particular game. And, and uh, you'll get a chance to see, you know, in a, in a, in a game-type setting kind of what some of the guys can do. So I'm excited to see them get out there under the lights. Have you figured out how to split the teams up yet? I let the assistant coach. So we're going to try to do our best. You know, we've had a couple injuries here as mm -hmm. of late, so you may not see everybody. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be a fun, a fun day. I guess uh, one of the last things I have for you: challenges that you face now, ten days out. Um, you know, you have the scrimmage against Hood coming up, but then you open against UMES uh, on the thirteenth. So, you know, what are you looking at right now, and, and kind of what are the the things you're getting together now in these last ten days to get ready for the thirteenth? Yeah, I mean, I, I think nothing's really changed. You know, we're we're trying to make sure that we get better every day. 
you know, because, you know, you, in order to become the best basketball team that we can be, we've got to improve, right, each mm-hmm. and every day. And if we stay the same as we are on November 2nd, all right, in March, well, that's no good. All right, we got to continue to improve. And now we have big bulks of practice time to be able to work on a lot of different things, to be able to put our offense in and our defense in, uh, special situations. Uh, there's tons of things that we've got to attack leading into our season, and we're working on those uh, daily. And I've been pleased with the guys and, and their efforts so far. Awesome, Coach. I appreciate the time. This is our first get-together of yeah. many we're going to have this season. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. Everything so far has been amazing. The tip-off dinner was amazing. Um, everything that it seems as though is happening here is is, is moving forward in, in a great way. And I'm looking forward to, I think, what's going to be an exciting basketball season. I think the Retrievers have some uh, yeah. some surprises in store for some conference teams coming up in the American yeah, East. We're looking forward to the season. Thanks for, awesome. for having me. You got it. Paul Minervar, Ryan Odom here with you. This is one of our, the first of our many chats we'll have this season on the Ryan Odom UMBC Basketball Show.